So part one, the Corona culture's evolution. Week one, okay, we were told that we had to stay home. We were told that there was a virus that are in the United States, and I'm coming from that point of view, although I know people are here from all over the world. You know, there was a lot of shock and awe and confusion. And that evolved into week two, where if you saw all over Instagram and you saw influencers and celebrities, that first week was about like, what the F is going on? Uh, there were some influencers in business, let's say Sheryl Sandberg, who was teaching us about washing our hands and the importance of it. There were influencers telling us about how to social distance. Um, and you also had fun or you saw fun. Christy Teigen and John Legend were uh, on her Instagram feed basically laughing at the fact that, oh my God, you know how many babies are going to be born after this? Which by the way, is not right in terms of the evolving cultural narrative. They're actually people who want to uh, have, uh, do not want to get pregnant and have kids at this particular time because, you know, the A, they don't want to catch it and give it to their infant, but B, uh, who knows where this is going to take us to. So yes, that was week two. Week three, as I've shown before, is, was the headline in the Wall Street Journal, which was America's make or break week. That was the first week of April, when many of us had to pay our bills, had to pay our mortgage, uh, have to pay our rent. And this was like the turning point where I felt that that turned into from shock into more anxiety. And uh, you know that actually coupled with the conversation of that was leading into uh, rising unemployment, rapid unemployment, which continues to be the conversation today. And then the third week, fourth week, which was last week, we had the Surgeon General basically saying that this is going to be our Pearl Harbor. Surgeon General warns that, you know, this is going to be the worst break of the coronavirus outbreak. And so now the narrative continues. And yesterday, where I'm basically saying or thinking about that we are on a road to what will be the new normalcy. But also, if you think about this, and not everybody is the same, is this also the new anxiety? We've been so, many of us have been anxious for the past few weeks, you know, trying to figure out what our shelter in place lives are going to be about. And even though many of us are still suffering and feeling lonely, uh, not knowing what to do, many of us have been furloughed and or unemployed. Um, you know, what is the when we do kind of get back into normalcy? You know, what kind of anxiety is that going to be? And how should we prepare for that, both for ourselves and our peers? So, you know, in the last week up until today, uh, we are seeing. You know, the New York Post a couple of days ago said basically the worst is over. Uh, Cuomo actually said that. And, you know, we've seen that there have been uh, re uh, councils both on the East Coast and the West Coast with Gavin Newsom and Oregon and uh, uh, Washington coming up with these reopening councils to re-strategize the openings of everything. Uh, we have seen uh, today the front page of the New York Times has illuminated how European nations are easing their pandemic rules and how should they move forward. Uh, you know, they're here in Italy, basically they said that they reopened some bookshelves, children's clothing, stores. Uh, Spain, actually, which we knew was also uh, a horrific uh, case study in uh, coronavirus contagion uh, is actually allowing workers to go back uh, to work, uh, even though their death toll is continuing to uh, elevate. And uh, yes, all over all over Austria, as I just highlighted, in Denmark, elementary school teachers, uh, you know, are returning to work, and young children and Czech Republic basically are actually starting to reopen sports centers. So is this a turning point is the question. Uh, who knows, we might get some very bad news any day. We'll see how they are going to evolve in terms of recovery. Uh, we have seen China um, with uh, you know how they are responding, but the question is, 
when are we going to? And what is it going to be like? I mean, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Shawshank Redemption, so to speak. Uh, yes, we're not, as we learned from Ellen DeGeneres, we shouldn't compare ourselves to being in jail. For those of you who didn't know, she basically said that at her house, you know, at her uh, house that she feels like she's in jail. And there was a lot of backlash, uh, you know, all over, you know, social media saying like, how could this person with a palatial uh, atmosphere around her actually say that it's like going to jail. And so she did get some backlash, but if you really think about it, I can understand that there is an analogy there because, you know, what is, you know, you saw Morgan Freeman, you know, try to reinstate himself into normal society, but we don't even know what normal society is. So uh, yeah, we're gonna see what happens next week in terms of this continuity of the cultural narrative. Uh, if you uh, just wanna know how business people are thinking about it, uh, CFOs that were uh, polled across the world by PwC uh, basically said that, or 22%, said that things will go back in business, 22% uh, of them in less than a month, 39% said one to three months. So it seems like that is the consensus in the business world, but obviously you can see there are others who think that it could be a lot worse than that. Um, I just wanted to go global for a second. I did say that China uh, is reinstating normalcy. And uh, obviously they want people to spend money. And in fact, uh, a, a lot of uh, companies like JD.com announced that it was offering uh, shopping points basically to drive uh, consumer demand. So in the same way, or like our government is creating stimulus and giving checks to both small businesses, businesses as well as individuals, uh, brands and companies are providing uh, a different form of stimulus. And they actually have this, uh, here's an example, I think it's Dior, yeah, in the luxury sector, there's a model actress named Angel Baby uh, who actually went inside the store of Dior to basically say how amazing it is to come back to reality. So uh, that's uh, where we are in the, in, the, in the cultural corona narrative. And uh, we'll see where we are next week. Hopefully, um, it'll be some better news. But uh, let's all stay together and uh, see where we go next week with our next free culture class.